Hello and you. thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin and I have my amazing co-anchors with me, Ife Omai <laughs> and Benny Yak. Hello. See, I know how to make you smile. <laughs> <laughs> Benny, tell me a creep. <laughs> tell me a creep. Did someone tell you your smile looks good <laughs> yesterday? Because I need to understand why you're just... Oh my... <laughs> It's a voice in my head telling me just to smile, so oh, I'm responding okay. to the voice. Okay. How are you ladies doing? The wow. voice. <laughs> yeah, the voice. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. So, we're starting... Oh, you are the corporate Malian and the older Malian. Thank God you're here right now on this episode. I'm so happy. So, Naramali is being dragged on Twitter for his post on coronavirus. So, he has been grossly responsible. First, he says, retreat if you don't believe in coronavirus. Then mm. he says, um, 5,000 people tested positive, and then the next line was um, for wanted pregnancy. And 5,000 confirmed cases mm -hmm, yeah. at all. For wanted pregnancy. I'm talking about unwanted pregnancy. Mm -hmm. For the first tweet, um, retreat if you don't believe in coronavirus. Um, I think he, there are few people who believe that. You know, it's just, it's still... But he shouldn't be perpetrating that. Yeah, I know. I mean, on that first tweet, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, say no, he wasn't supposed to do that. He was wrong. But that is still, um, like, the fact that a lot of people used to believe that there's no coronavirus in Nigeria. Even with the so far recorded cases right now, some people still believe, you know what, it's all a scam, it's all a sham. But for someone of Naramali, knowing the influence he wields, he has all of the following. You shouldn't be saying stuff like that. It's not to joke with, all right? It's, it's a very uncertain times, and we can't joke with the matters of coronavirus. As much as we have a president who couldn't tell us what pronounced COVID-19 properly, um, that came up as a joke in itself, you mm -hmm. know. And then on the second tweet, I think that was just him now trying to be funny, you know. Um, Five thousand confirmed cases. Oh, and I mean pregnancies in, in Lekki, in Lekki. Um, it's the country we live in. We make, we, we find humor in everything, in every single thing. All, all of, all, I can remember all of the plane crashes. People lost family, loved ones. The, Comedians came on stage and they were cracking jokes with all of that, you know. And so I think it still, it still, it still points down to our value, what, what, we, what we place importance on. It's to let you know that as a people, we don't take some things we should take seriously, seriously. I think that you being know? a celebrity does not automatically make you an intellectual. No, hmm. but no, de definitely yes. it doesn't. Ooh, you know? wow. But again, the table, yeah. break it, turn <laughs> but again, it down. that's a bit good because I, I totally, I'm 101 percent with you on that because yeah. because if it does, then many of them will see them at the forefront doing stuff mm -hmm. about this right now. So the fact that he tweeted that, I'm not surprised, based on the fact that we know that so many people do not still believe that um, coronavirus is real. So, I mean, he's one of them. It's just, yeah. It just hurts because he has that level of influence. Yeah. And if someone like that is saying it is not, or even the slightest it's insinuating, insinuating yeah, it's yeah. going to have yeah. a strong influence on people. So, someone needs to talk to him. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to agree with Elsie. I wasn't surprised at all. If there's anyone that was, I would have imagined to do this, it would be him. Um, I find him very entertaining and I can say he's a good artist, but he's irresponsible to me. There's just everything about him that just screams irresponsibility and lack of seriousness. Um, and he's always meddling with things that are not to joke with. And I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to not allow do them, dead dogs lie, whatever that saying is. But um, you can look at his track record and just see how, like, this is not beneath him or far away from him. I think he knows, he's aware of the kind of following that he has. He doesn't care. And that's how he wants to use it. I think it's now just up to the other people, up to the other celebrities to ensure that they're not silent. I found that a lot of celebrities that I'm following personally are quite quiet about it. Um, and I, I'm not saying that we should all be activists, but you know, this is a time where the issue at hand, like the invisible enemy, like the Americans would call it, it's, it's, it's quite a powerful enemy that yeah. unites everyone together. I don't think this is the type of time where you have an option in keeping quiet, especially if you're getting your money from us, like especially if you are, you know, getting benefits from being a celebrity, this is the one time where you actually need to speak up, even if it's you say little things like wash or your hands. Or just repost things from, yeah. the, you know, which is yeah. why I'm going to give kudos um, to Delona Gray. Yeah. He's right now in a partnership with NCDC, so he's going to posts every information they send to him yeah. daily on his pages. And that's a celebrity. And yeah, that's something. You know what I mean? 
I don't know if it was on this table yesterday, and we did say before we came on air, I mean, we really don't have celebrities in we Nigeria. Don't. Like Shirali said, I don't think everyone should be on the front burner, um, front line of being um, activism, activists. But just the time we need yours to come out and say something. You will great influence. Say something to your to your large numbers of followers. Let them know this thing is real. This scourge is real. It, it's a it's a global pandemic. We can't joke with it. And that's why someone in the likes of Naramali can come out and make a joke of something that's actually ravaging the entire globe right now. Mm. You know, and I don't take it lightly to anybody who is playing down on dates, including those I'm still so much on those religious houses who felt the need because of their Titan offering to still ask people to come into their buildings mm. just because you can't let go of your greed and your money. You still felt it was okay for people to come into an enclosed place and in the name of God who instituted the authorities that and say we should obey those authorities, you're going in defiance of the rules of the authorities. It's just sickening. So as a nation, it just let us know how irresponsible we all can be sometimes. Agreed. Okay. On the next story, which is a very interesting twist of events, um, CDQ is in the news for something good for the very first time. He gives his tenants rent relief. He shared a post on Instagram which read, in respect of the alarming widespread of, widespread of coronavirus, we, the Yusuf family, have decided to cut off 30% of um, your annual rent for 2020. The 30% is equivalent to three months pay and it is solely agreed upon to cover up for the period of unproductiveness caused by this epidemic, encouraging his tenants to stay indoor and adhere to all safety guidelines from the government. If I could get up and give him a... Yeah, uh, to get it. Like, I said, it's an interesting yeah. twist of events. You, you know, we said, yes, we said it yesterday <laughs> when Netflix did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an individual. Now, that's a celebrity doing That's a mm -hmm. big deal in oh, yeah, Nigeria. It is a big deal. 30%, which is equivalent to your three months' salary. Ideal landlord. Hi. You know, you know, it might not even just be your landlord. It could be, it could be your employer. It could be, mm. it, you know, don't you get no, it? No, this one I is mean, landlord. Okay, okay, landlord. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Because I think um, the housing, the housing... It's um, a big deal. ...role big in deal. this particular period is in, is almost more important than than employees and employer yeah. relationship I, i've seen a lot of companies in niger in lagos that have given their staffs 50k everyone 50k minus their salary just oh, to go great. and be able to stock up on their houses and because all of them are going to be working from home so buy internet buy oh, wow. food and water and things like that i've seen that but i don't think that that even has the bigger as much effect as this as putting um three months off your rent because at the end of the day we're all going to run to homes mm -hmm. for safety yeah this is stay home stay home is what we're going to be preaching now we're not even preaching it as much yeah i'm not trying to prophesy negatively but we'll get to a point where we really have to stay home there has to be a place it's that we can, inevitable there has to be a place where we can go to and without having the fear of you know like being ex executed or having like this debt that you can't pay because you're you're coming from home i mean I, I, even a blind person can see now that we're going into a recession so any financial support that we can all give each other yeah will be great especially yeah, for people who should come to play yeah especially for people who have um I mean, for him to do that, obviously, is privilege, and we have to acknowledge that. But I feel like if you have a lot of money in your account right now, this is the this is the one time where you need to bring it out and share it amongst people because there's nothing you're gonna do with your money for the next God knows when. At least for this year, nobody is buying holes, nobody's renting, nobody is having a cruise, nobody's traveling. So there's there is a lot of um, disposable income that I feel like people, we've already started seeing that abroad. Like people are coming out buying hand sanitizers, hand sanitizers, feeding the old that's where we really need to start to um see more of that so i hope that he has started this domino effect and that people catch on to it i hope that people I, catch I hope on to so it too well. because <clears throat> to be honest 30 percent 30 percent of your of your of the rent which he says like your three month salary financial expert will tell you if you're if you're a monthly earner that you're not supposed to expend more than three months of your salary on the rent or wherever you're living and so he's done this is something huge Very you know huge. and coming from cdq yes as much as i don't believe um He's kind of privileged, but there are many people who are more privileged than he is. Definitely. <clears throat> I don't think their mind ever went to this. So that's to let you know someone who's thinking and trying to make his own little difference in his little corner. And I think I'm seeing what this is finally doing to the entire world. It's, it's making us realize how human we are, regardless of our, our creed, our beliefs, our status. Um, and amazingly, I hate to go down this road. For those confirmed, most of the confirmed cases we have in Nigeria right now, uh, so much the, the elitists, those mm. who are the ones who have traveled recently. Mm -hmm. you know, so it doesn't respect creed, um, status. So at this point, we, we all share the same humanity and it's time for you to look out for, especially the elderly ones, your loved ones. You know, anybody that tries to play this down in any way, in any form you're trying to do it, I'll just, I'll be mad at you. You know, and my mind keeps going back, I shouldn't say it again. Those really just fellas, I mean, 
I mean, what, what God are they serving? I don't even understand it. Mm. I feel like it's deeper than that. I feel like Nigerians are just not grasping the idea of it. I mean, it's not, it's understandable. I'm not, I'm not trying to give an excuse for it, but we are smitened with um, illiteracy. Um, and the, the biggest problem that we have in relation to coron coronavirus is that we don't trust our government. And that is the problem. So anything that comes out from the mouth like of the government host, yeah. is, 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 is like a host because we've had too many of that. And it's like the boy that cried wolf. We've cried wolf so many, many times. times that when it's our time to actually take this thing seriously. And then also because usually it's always the other way around where it comes from Africa first. I think that people have also whitewashed this, this disease that ah, it's a or people white man, thing, white man's disease. and it's no, a, yeah, it's and it don't affect black people. So um, until faces like no, I, I, this is so insensitive, but until faces that we know, like um, Abu Bakr's son, yeah. or a face that we know that we can see, until that starts to happen, um, we won't really get to a point where people are taking. Yeah, um, it's happening. So it's happening. And yeah. Guys, no, no matter what you believe, whatever your, your prejudices are, your your um, your subjectivity about coronavirus, just know it is not a hoax. It, it is, is real. It is real. It's I right. wish it was a hoax. Yeah. yeah. It's time for a quick break. When we return, there will be more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do everybody feeling all right. Minimal are you? Mm. music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> sleeping early, sleeping early. <laughs> Welcome back. Christy Tegan attacks Donald Trump. Giving birth is more painful than coronavirus tests. So I was trying to look for the tweets from Donald Trump that um, started this, but I don't think it's a tweet. It's probably oh, a, a video. He said, something yeah. he said. <sighs> okay. Let me keep my opinion to myself. I don't get it. Given who's, Donald Trump said giving birth is more painful. No, no, no. no. He was talking about, about the how pain. the pain of coronavirus. for being yeah. tested. Um, I don't know the process. I haven't, yeah. you know, I haven't been I've seen a picture, but I don't know Chris, how true Chris, that is. Chris, like, you have to saying put, like, giving birth is more painful than yeah. it's and, and it's not just her. There's another <laughs> lady who actually started it. I think she's a TV host or something. And the conversation what, has blown out of proportion. And I'm wondering... What exactly is your problem? Exactly. I, think, I, think, I, mean, I think Americans are mad at Trump. Donald Trump. And yeah. they have every right to be. He's done a lot of things that are not the most effective way. Oh, and not, no, and not the most conventional. I wouldn't like to use yeah, effective. effective. They, I think, they, I think they're it's not, not used to I, no, it. They're not it's used not, to it. Let's mm, even take this, this coronavirus yeah, issue it's not, first. It's not, when he shut down America, everybody was attacking Donald Trump. But right now, it's clear that he saved lives. I mean, that's just an example. When I'm saying un that, that, that ineffective. Ineffective, 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 I'm talking about him calling it the Chinese virus. I'm talking about him mentioning things that are, 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 that are triggering but you know, he has, physical he has damage you know, he has to mouth. other people. And that's no. what I'm talking yeah, about. Has, that's what mouth, I'm talking yeah. about. It's, I, I don't think loose it talk, is. I don't yeah. think the president should be calling it that. Um, <laughs> We're already having series of attacks on Asian people all over the country. Oh, he tweeted something recently. I don't know if you saw that. So for right. me to say that it's ineffective, I think I have a right to say that. I think you can talk better than that to get more effective ways of, of organizing. Although I don't want to trail away because I know if it was Africa, they wouldn't hesitate <sighs> to come to Niger to come to Africa, hmm. take pictures of the dead of the uh, black people, and say, "Oh, poor children, come and save our lives." I'm not trying to like make him look like you know he's not he's not doing something that everybody has has done. Has, yeah. has done. <clears throat> But um, then again, there is this underlining like anger, especially from Democrats to Donald Trump. Do I really support that? Not really. I think Donald Trump actions are better than how he talks. And to me, I'll put my money where the actions are rather than somebody who talks really well and yeah. is pleasing everybody, but isn't really doing that much work. Yeah. Um, but for, for Tiggy, um, I call her Tiggy. She needs to calm down. I don't get it. Um, it's not that deep. 
we know you've it's given birth. It's not even close to being deep. You, you, you know you've given birth. You know the funny thing? I applaud you for that. She's but... talking about giving birth. Some people jumped on it and said talking about um, the test and processes when you're dealing with cancer. And I'm like, wow. Now, this is getting really serious. I think what... So, if you say you've gone you know, through a certain level of pain, someone has come to tell to you another her, level of pain. I'm going to defend her. I think the problem with the president complaining about the pain of the test is also not encouraging people to go do the test. There's a lot of people who have been quarantined that have been sick. Now, you see tweets of people saying, my neighbor is sick and it's not coming out, my boyfriend is sick and it's not coming out, because there's a lot of stigma around that. And you complaining, like, a, I don't use the B word, um, about the pain as a precedent might just, you just know, not encourage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, don't, I, I, I again, except she's coming from that, but I still feel like there's other ways that you can say that rather than comparing that to giving birth. Like, giving birth is like a natural thing that nobody forced you to do. You That's opened it, your right. legs, you got pregnant, and it's a natural thing that happens. This is something that. This is a virus that we didn't invite. That's not supposed to be sitting among human beings. And we're forced to that type of, um, you know, subjection of, 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 of treatment in trying to get a test whether you're positive or negative. So I feel like we're allowed to say, ouch, like that hurts. You know, like I'm not going to compare my surgery to giving birth either. I mean, we, we come out and say, oh, that yeah. hurts. There are people who still have injection fright still tomorrow. Yeah. So you cannot downplay that because you've gone through childbirth. Yeah, that's I mean, it. I, 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 I love Chrissy. That's the very interesting part of this whole conversation. Like, I love her. But this time around, I don't know. I think it's been lately, you. actually, that she's been losing me. There's a lot of yeah, like she, righteous she anger. Yeah. I'm just like, whoa, calm down. I, I, Where I, I is coming feel, from? And again, I feel it's misdirected. I, I want to say maybe it was all, all the emotion, all the emotions that comes mm. up with being pregnant, and probably right now she's going through a lot of emotion and post. Um, post tra traumatic um, um, PP. No, maybe she's just P worried about the number of people you know, dying but and she just reacted mm, yeah. that way. But this reaction. Yeah, but is what there's, I no, there's no ground for comparison. Mm. And like you rightly said, Donald Trump does not, he defies the typical, you know, aristocratic president of the United States. He's very much unconventional in the way he says things. He's, do I think he has loose, a whole lot of loose talk? Sure, yes, definitely. I think so. For, for a president, some of the things they are not befitting. You know, and so that's why he, I say, it defies who the American, the stereotype of who the American president is. But is he getting a whole lot of work done? His critics cannot even deny that. Yes, it might, it might sometimes seem to them unclear and maybe in the most harshest way. But he's doing stuff, and he is. yeah, he is really working for the American people. And I wish our governments can actually take you from that I mean, and, and do what they need give to do. Them Buhari you know. and take Trump. I will, though. <laughs> Uh, you know? I will. I mean, he's causing a different problem, but I feel like his prob the the solutions he's giving out to me just is, is a white supremacist, and they're so they're so. I don't uh, tend to disagree you know. with that. I feel oh, like he's he done a is. lot for the black community. He says racist things. That's but when, I, when I keep saying like, if you look at his actions, forget what Trump is say saying. The I was referring to, he actually came out to advocate for the Asian community yeah. that they've been through a lot, uh, and that we should. Maybe, my, maybe, maybe, maybe we're I'm like, no, no, I have to go and check. If maybe no, maybe we argue that because a little it's political. The elections are getting close by, and so he needs but to make them feel somehow. Before now, he, let's go back. Let, let's like go back to all of the things he has giving, said before taking, now. He sounds like he looks to be like know, a basket that has he's a, poli like, he's a politician. And he's doing some work. He's shedding he's it with his words. He's I think politician he's, he right puts now. it out as he feels. So. Yeah, that's it. And so he's getting closer to another election year. He needs them, for Christ's sakes. And so but he's he, been doing that since the beginning of time. And I, I don't know. We'll see. Mm. Okay, we'll see. So moving on, most Nollywood actors lift themselves by using sugar daddies and mummies. Um, this is coming from Wally Adenuga. It says, uh, my cartons, okay, many people are oblivious of the fact that many of the young Nollywood actors and actresses who live flamboyant lifestyles make their money outside filmmaking. They make people believe everything is all right in the filmmaking. You see them building big houses, living in affluence, but their source of money is beyond making the film. Now, let me, now, um, as much as I want to agree with Wally Adenuga, right, on one or two things there, and then also I want to um, reprimand him. You, you are, you're someone of repute in the movie industry. Don't be talking. You know, exactly. I mean, you just can't if come the industry out. is not making money, Then, then you guys should yeah. fix it. Then there the is problem. a problem. That's it. Then there should be a problem. It's nothing to come out and be so... It sounded like he's so... Um, arrogantly audacious about saying it, you know, the movie industry is not making money. Why is it not making money? People should be able to live and buy houses of their craft. And yeah. so if the movie industry is not paying people bills and they have to look for other means to pay their bills, 
then there's a problem with the industry. And let's Can be we real. fix it? Let's be real. Right. I feel and so like whatever, whatever people decide to do afterwards, if my means of livelihood is not meeting my, my bills and I decide to find some other means, whichever way I choose to, that is none of your business. Fix the problem in the movie industry and let people start living that life, buying houses, riding expensive cars from their craft, from the dividends of their craft. So I don't think he was justified coming out and saying people are living of their means, blah, 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 blah. It's, it means the movie industry is a failure as it is. This is what I want to say. I don't even think that this statement holds any water. Working in the um, industry for a bit with artists directly, I can tell you that the amount of people that are actually making this money, living their lives styled as flamboyant from sugar mommies and daddies are very slim. These people are doing much more than that. Go and talk to somebody who actually sleeps with sugar mommies and daddies and let's tell, let them tell you the percentage that they get. It's not a lot. I don't know who has really like... Um, they the yeah, they've made it like they said, sensitized now, she, to make it look like once you just, just open your legs, your money will mommy, come money and it's going to be a lot. There's ladies out there hustling, sleeping with men and they're not even, it's not even cutting the cost. They're doing many other things yeah. because now I feel like we're beginning to even push the idea subconsciously that that Tell is even people. a way yeah. of making, making money. money. And it's, not. it's not. It's not that lucrative. Like, I'll tell you that for free. I haven't done it personally, but I know people first hand that have one, two, three, four, five sugar diets, and it's not even cutting the cost of their things. They're doing real estate on the side, they're doing advertising on the side, they're doing yes. something no, okay. this else. Is a, this, is a, this is the right. Yeah, even, like, even like that, that, I think easy. at the end of the day, I agree which is not that easy, but at the end of the day, there's still people who are cutting it that way with their sugar mommy and sugar daddy connections in all of those things you're saying. I feel you know, like but, it's not the only but, thing. No, I don't think it's the only thing, all right? But I think, again, it comes up to say, once, um, once you can't necessarily pinpoint someone's source of income, then people begin to speculate. But, it, people okay, begin so to assume. Another thing I want to so ask. For me, my concern is the narrative. But like you Benny, might say, well, um, we're the pushing industry forward, is not the only... Is, um, um, the Nollywood industry is not the only industry that has that. You find doctors that we know their salary oh, and it doesn't on. reflect oh, with, oh, their, yes. with their lifestyles. Yes. You find lawyers, you find... So basically, it's not peculiar. It's, it's not peculiar. Yeah. I think but, it's but a you know Nigerian know why thing that, that nobody is. wants to yeah. say their real source of income. income. But you know what that is? Because the entertainment industry, there's this fame and flamboyancy comes mm. with that. Yeah. Once you see them appear, you feel the way they appear is the way they are. But it's not always the case. You know, there's more yeah. than mid the eyes. There are a few percentage of them that are really living the life they want to live. Many yeah. are living on bold, bold income. Uh, you know, and so my concern now is that there should, there should be a way for them to monetize Nollywood. If it's not helping the actors in it live the kind of life they should be living, then there's a problem with the industry they should fix because they're meant that, that, that what they come out, what, what they appear as is meant actually to be the life they're living. Because what he's telling us, um, for most of them, majority of them, the way they appear is not who they are. Yeah, I think, I think that for someone like him, like you said earlier, this conversation shouldn't, not, yeah. shouldn't start from him. We know there are problems in the industry, yeah. but the conversation should be what is the way forward, not trying to tell us what somebody's doing with their private parts, which yeah. is something that really None of your business. Yeah. turns yeah. me People's off. Because like parts, she rightly said, though. yes, they probably have, of, some of them have these people, but it is not exactly the money that they're getting that is keeping them where they yeah. are. It takes a lot a of it, yeah. wisdom yeah. and intelligence and being able to win some certain businesses still, yeah. around whatever little crumbs you think they get from their let me, sugar daddies. Let me tell, yeah, me, yeah, let me tell what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's not necessarily they get that kind of money from their sugar daddies and mommies, but their sugar daddies and mommies have connections in so many places that I can point to them. Like so because they, 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 they still contract. take, yeah. take yeah. the shugi, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> it still takes that person to work hard to work. and hustle that connection. So it's not safe once you get a sugar daddy, and they'll be pumping you money. Mm -hmm. No, they, they want to show have you to one or two yourself. ways. Yes. Like, walk. Okay, have I have connections here, which is going to value you. And so, hey, I'm going to link you up to this person. I'm going to link so you up to that person. So, at the end person. of the day, Fair and Ben is saying that if you don't have value, sugar mommy profession will not work for you. <laughs> you won't be making so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the last story of our conversation on this episode is on the performing music um, Employers Association of Nigeria, PMAN. Um, they deem it necessary to state its position on the Coson crisis. A recent report from an auditing firm revealed that Coson collected over 1.1 billion naira in royalty and licensing fees from users in 2017, but claimed it only distributed 225 million naira to holders, while over 800 million is unaccounted for. This is totally unacceptable, according to them. The National Working Committee of PMAN has now called on the Nigeria Copyright Commission NCC in protection of rights holders to immediately effectuate the revocation of Coson's operating license. Wow. 
So I guess that answers your question as to yeah. like what is the problem <laughs> with um, Nigeria? The cement industry. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, private, pri piracy has always been one thing that comes into my mind when I think about that. Um, so to to when I was reading this, I just felt like wow, okay, away from all the piracy of music and and songs that are happening, we're still generating this legal money of that amount. It makes me wonder on in Honestly, an ideal in world. Yeah, in an ideal world, how boxed up would these people Just actually look at be? Hollywood and the Western world that you know. Yeah, yeah. it's and, and, and for, uh, for Nigeria where we have a lot of people looking into our music and our, our art, it's it's really sad to see. Um, the 800 million, even despite that they want to revoke the license, I still think needs to be accounted for. It's Money, you cannot tell me rats ate it. So, uh, what? We said they cannot. <clears throat> Revocation doesn't cut it for me. They, they, it should be investigated. A, a pilot should be set up. It should be well, investigated. I, I less they, they've the always wanted to investigate because this yeah. Coson drama has been on for a very long time. But um, the powers that be, like they will call it, um, they are refusing to be audited by an external body and all that. So, it's, why, why would you refuse? Why, why would you refuse to be audited if? you're transparent and fair enough in your dealings you should corruption. you know and so at the end of the day like you rightly said so most of these guys now their intellectual property is being um, exploited and what is meant to them and it's not totally coming to them and so they will look for other sources to 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 make it's up for amazing how you know. every sector and i'm not even excluding one every sector in nigeria has an atom of corruption and they're, well, lick, they're leakages in the system when you say that's, that's, that, that's saying that when the head is bad the body is polluted that's exactly what the problem mm. is because anyone even me if i'm going to go into a business and i ever come across like the thought of corruption the first thing i'll think about is the fact that who's going to tell me not to do it because they're already doing it and that person is supposed to hold me accountable is going to say the same thing up until the head now that's the only reason why i wouldn't no think about the same thing in a different community because i'll be like my boss didn't even do that like if I end up dealing with corruption on that type of level, I will be reprimanded. But you can't correct somebody with the same hand that used to do the same crime, if yeah. you get what I mean. So it it's, it's from way. the top to the bottom. And it's it, it's something that what they're teaching Nigerians subconsciously. No, they've taught us and we have learned. Mm. You know, for me, the, the, you know, yeah. for me, the, the P-Man Coulson um, back and forth saga, just typically it's like the, the, the microchism of what Nigeria is. You know, we, we have many, we have people in charge of our wealth and it's not been evenly distributed. It's been um, embezzled, corruption here and there. So it's, it's, it stems from every structure in the economy as lead to as they are. Mm. And so we are all a part of the problem as a people. And the era we're going to fix the problem where we find ourselves. The Maybe Corona will come. fix the problem. You know? it's, it's Maybe, at mm. least, hopefully, to help us fix the healthcare system. Hopefully. To start with, yeah. yeah. And that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching and do catch up on this conversation and all our um, exclusive content by subscribing and visiting our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co anchors, Sifer Omai and Benny Yak, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please do stay at home if you have to.